Hey, what's going on guys? Javier here. So I've got Apple's new display in-house, their newly released studio display. I'll be going over my overall experience with this display as beginner content creator and media consumer. I'll also try my best to dabble with some gaming if possible. This display did launch alongside their new Mac Studio, which I will be covering in another video, but today I'll be diving into this display, primarily using it alongside my MacBook Pro. So jumping in, unboxing Apple products are always a treat. Shout out to whoever at Apple is in charge of the packaging. This box I'll definitely be keeping for whenever I need to move or store this display. But getting into it, you've got this geometric marvel of a package that presents the display like a treasure. And there's only a couple things inside. The studio display itself, some documents with a sticker, and the 1 meter Thunderbolt 4 cable. Quick note, this cable alone is 130 bucks as well, especially if you need a longer one, so it's a good thing that this thing is included. But lifting up this thing, it's actually heavier than I thought, which is definitely a good thing. Some heft will keep this display from moving about. So love Apple or hate them, one thing they do really well is design. Everything they put out looks really good, and this is no exception. It looks really similar to the M1 iMac really, and I personally love that design. The black bezels look nice, and the precision drilled holes on top and bottom really add to the aesthetic. The back end is simple as ever, and this display is a minimalist dream. It is a lot thicker though, but that doesn't really affect anything. In terms of looks overall, it really does shine above a lot of other monitors on the market. Regarding the stand, however, while it is included with the display, unlike the Pro Display XDR, you still need to pay for basic functionality like height adjustment or swivel. The included options are either VESA or the regular tilt, but if you need height adjustment, it is an extra 400 bucks. My other Gigabyte monitor has loads of adjustability, but for me specifically, it's not that big of a deal. I've already spent months with the M1 iMac, so I've gotten used to tilt only. Talking about the power cable, it's built really well, but it's also a bit of a letdown. The braided cable is super high quality, but the fact that it's non-removable kind of sucks. I'm just not a fan of non-removable cables, since if anything should happen to this cable, the display itself is bricked unless the cable can be repaired. Besides all that, the build is really solid and the display is heavy enough, it isn't really going to be rocking about or anything, and some folks might buy this just for the design itself. Alright, so let's talk specs. This display does come with a 5K panel, an A13 Bionic chip, which comes in the iPhone 11, which is wild to think. This monitor has a better chip than most smartphones. No doubt this is adding to the already hefty price tag. Apart from that, it does come with a six speaker setup with spatial audio, as well as a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera with center stage. In terms of ports, you only have four, three USB-C and one Thunderbolt port. I wouldn't particularly expect it from Apple, but including an HDMI port would have opened this display up to so many more people. I would have loved to have tested a new generation game console on here, but they simply don't work with each other. I even picked up this Anchor USB-C to HDMI dongle to test, and the display simply didn't pick up the system. If you're trying to connect anything outside of a Thunderbolt device, it just doesn't work, so keep that in mind. While marketed towards the professional, it seems, I feel this display is actually for the consumer as well. Let's just call them prosumers. The device goes up to 600 nits, which honestly is bright enough, especially for me. This won't cover HDR content, but for myself at least, I only work with SDR content, so this is a non-issue. I'm next to a massive window as well, and I haven't had any issues with the brightness. Outside of ports, there's really nothing else. Apart from software adjustments, there's no real way to manipulate the brightness, camera, or speaker volumes. That's all done system side. Coming down to how this display looks though, it looks really, really good. More than good, the 5K output really does well with all sorts of content, and I've fallen in love with how Apple machines use scaling on a display like this. Having a 5K display is like having a bigger display, but without having a bigger display. For me, I've changed the scaling on the Mac to accommodate more space, which allows me to fit more on the screen. Check out this post by Jonathan Morrison on Twitter, it really helps show the difference in size. Overall, everything is crazy sharp, and I'm really happy with how it looks. I'm by no means a professional user either, so I won't pretend to know much about HDR and all that stuff, but watching content on here looks really great regardless and I'm definitely happy with it. You definitely won't catch many people gaming on here though, but I decided to try out some casual games like Life Goes On and Diablo 3 and they look fine really. You're not buying this monitor to game of course, but it's definitely capable if you're looking for something casual. Okay, so the camera on this display is a straight up miss, to be blunt about it. I'm, I'm not sure how Apple marketed their camera to look like this when it actually looks like this. It works just fine, but even with really good lighting, it just doesn't quite hold up compared to the MacBook Pro, the M1 iMac, or my iPhone 13 Pro. Center stage is cool, but it's kind of gimmicky. It does work well enough though. Apple did mention the quality of the camera would improve with an update, but for being one of the main features of this product, it should have just shipped in a better state. 
In terms of the microphone, it has one, nothing really special here. For the studios that this is marketed towards, you're obviously not using this microphone for any professional work, but it definitely works for any sort of FaceTime or teleconferencing. Even for the everyday users such as myself, I'm probably gonna be plugging in an external mic. But unlike the poor quality of the camera, the speakers on this display really do a good job. Honestly, this is a heavy redeeming quality for this monitor. The speakers are actually so good. I'm not an audio nerd by any means and I could easily use these speakers for everything daily. I do currently use a stereo paired set of HomePod minis which still do sound better, but wow, the, the built-in speakers are still surprising. Perhaps since the monitor is so much thicker, it allows better lows, but the sound is full and it gets super loud. I might even consider repurposing these HomePods throughout my house, but I'll spend more time with the speakers before I make a decision. Check out this quick audio sound comparison. Overall, there's no complaints here. If you're worried about speakers, don't be, unless you're big into audio. So in terms of what I use this display for, it's really for everything except gaming, as I mentioned. I watch movies on here, which again, look really good. I edit my videos on here, and the scaling options, you really do have a lot of screen estate to work with. I mostly split my windows half and half, but you could also get away with a three-way split. It's nice to be able to FaceTime someone as well through this almost all-in-one package. It really is convenient. I do love minimal setups too, so having just one cable is awesome if that matters. So who's this display really for and should you buy it? The answer is a hard yes and here's why. This display is amazing at a lot of things, but super bad for others. But really, it depends on how you weigh things within your needs. Obviously, the gamer isn't going to be picking this up, but perhaps the Apple integrated prosumer will. Even just the average person who literally wants a beautiful display might pick this up. Just as people spend their hard-earned cash on the nicer things in life, this feels like one of those nicer things. Don't feel bad if you want to dish out the 1500 bucks, and if you're saying hell no to that price for this display, well, it's clearly not for you anyways, and that's okay. There's probably a hundred other reviews out right now, all with great information, but just do what you want to do. Apple products look amazing and they last a long time. Their phones, their computers, and hopefully their monitors as well. If anything, you'd be treating this display like an investment or not because at the end of the day, get what you want or like, even if it's just a shiny Apple display. Anyways, that's been it. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Feel free to like and sub for more content. Till next time.